First of all, let's create a project. Let's call it hero. And now let's build a hero section like the one you see on the landing side. Now this box is to, supposed to have this lower part, the button, and the heading. One and two. All right, and now let's take care of the upper part of that hero image. This box needs to be much bigger. Let's say for now just something like 300 pixel. And this other part could be probably something like, let's say 400 pixel. We will adjust later. And this upper part needs a background. So let's add a background image and choose it. You can see anything because the, the image is an SVG. This is the optimal format for this type of image, but it's semi-transparent. We could use just a dark color to make it visible, but we actually need to use a gradient. Let's go to Figma and pick this gradient. This is this dark gradient that we have here. We can just copy it and we add another background. We choose gradient and we paste. That's it. We got automatically extracted layer. Now the problem is we don't see the stars anymore. The layers are in the wrong order. We are now going to just move them back. And now you see the stars. Our next step is to take care of this lower part. Let's select the background. And now it's positioned just like in our original example. In our original example, we have also another gradient over here. I'm gonna copy and paste it the same way. A gradient and paste. Again, we have it in the wrong order. Something is still not looking right. We are missing this background color. Let's put this background color on this top box. Now it starts to look like we want it. Our next step is to add this headline and the button. To do so, let's add another box. We want this box to be positioned in the middle above the other back boxes. To do so, we are going to position relatively this container and then absolutely this new box. By the way, we ended up having this box in the wrong uh, layer. We want it to be inside of that box. Let's move it in. And by the way, let's name the boxes because it's slowly becoming difficult to talk about them. So let's call this box here. Let's call this box content. Let's call this box background upper and this one background lower. All right, we need to position this box in the middle and I want to use position absolute for this. Let's set position absolute and top zero, right zero, bottom zero, left zero. All right. This content is now bigger than our original box, even though it is inside. You see it goes through the entire screen. And this is because the hero is still not positioned relative. Relative positioned element will contain 
the absolute position element. Now this box is exactly inside of our hero container. Now let's add a heading. Now you can see the heading because it's like dark over dark. So let's have a look at our design. This heading is not actually just a regular color. It has again a gradient. Let's copy the CSS of this gradient and use it. Now the gradient has applied to the container, but we want it to be on the text. To do so, there is a clip option. We still can properly see it because the color has to be transparent for the background to apply. Now this looks more like our heading. Let's adjust the text. Center it and use the right font. For the font, I want to start using a design token because I want to reuse it everywhere else. So let's create a design token. Select the font. It's a custom font we want to use, so let's upload it. Now we are editing this design token. As you can see, it is selected. If we, we can go back to the local, which will be selected then, or we can switch back. The active selected token is always visible here on the property that has been defined on this token. If the value has been brought by another token or defined on a different breakpoint, you will see it in this orange color. This color coding system is the same as in Webflow. Let's make the font size a little bigger. Maybe something like this. And the line height a little smaller. And actually I want to use a RAM unit for the font size. It has automatically converted our pixel value to RAM. Let's add the link button. We are going to use the link text component. In the original design, it is using two backgrounds. One is inside, another one is on the outside. I can copy them from Figma and use it right here. Let's add two backgrounds and paste them from Figma. Number one, number two. Let's add the border with a transparent color so we can apply the second gradient to that border instead. Two pixel widths and some border edges. Let's also add some padding and we can already see one of the backgrounds has applied there. Let's choose which background applies to the border and which background applies to the content. To do so, we are going to select one background and decide where it should clip. This one should clip to the padding box and this one should clip to border box. Backgrounds look correct now. Let's take care of the font. We have a base Typography token already. We need to change the color. Let's use the local token and put it at the end. I will use a slightly bigger size, a slightly smaller line height, and the white color. Let's use the right text and a slightly bolder font. Actually, I would prefer to use RAM as a font size again and make it slightly smaller. Top and bottom padding could also be a little smaller. Now it looks good to me. Now I'm going to set some hover state for this. I'm using the hover state and let's change the width of the border to, let's say, 4 pixel. Now every time I'm hovering, it changes, but it also changes the size of the button. So we need to compensate for this with the padding. For this, we are going to go back and select the 
link, change the hover state, and set the padding. We had 19 on the horizontal padding. We now need to adjust to 17 because border is now four pixel. And horizontally we had 11. Now we set it to nine. And now it should not jump anymore. Nice. Last but not least, I'm going to add some responsiveness to it. We can play and see how it's going to look on different resolutions. So I'm going to just resize and see what happens. For instance, this is how it's going to look on 2000 pixel size of canvas. And this is how it's going to look on small mobile device. Let's optimize for 360 pixel for most likely any mobile device. The biggest issue here is the font size. So let's take care of this one. This is perfect. And now the position is not perfect. So let's add some margin above. And I think there should be a little more distance between these two elements. For this, I'm going to select the content again and adjust the spacing, the gap between the elements, between the two flex children. And here we go, like this. Maybe even slightly more. And now let's have a look again. That's it for now.